Downtown Daniel, back here in Northampton, at the Northampton Open Media Studio. So pleased to back, be back in town here, what I call hallowed ground for American society's foundations of togetherness. And this is the place that gave me the idea of calling my total program the honesty and equitable equality movement to begin with. Before I go on, I would like to let you folks know whoever chooses to listen, as the greatest man who ever walked earth said, <laughs> 2,000 plus years ago, Northampton is the one place and I've traveled all over this country and lived in more than a half dozen states where the businessmen, the politicians, the street people, the drug people, the homeless, all talk to each other civilly and live in harmony. It's not quite utopia, but it's closer to it than anywhere else I've ever set foot in in America. So, that being said, here we are, fall of 2024. Let me introduce what I'm about. Pioneer Valley Access TV. We promote saving bodies, souls, minds, and futures. I am the producer-director, downtown Daniel Evans, founder of the Brothers and Sisters of Humanity, People for Honesty in America, Speak Up America, No Ho Live, Messages to the World, and co-founder of the Cathedral of the Night, a Sunday service for the homeless, the needy, and even people who have a home if you're in need of a meal, and we're all always in need of spiritual uh, foundation. That's what we're here for. I'm also the author of what we're going to talk about it, to a great degree, the Taylor Floyd Honesty and Equitable Equality Amendment in tandem with the R. Barry Brooks New Deal 2020. Now, let me start explaining. These amendments promote cures instead of Band-Aids. To begin with, $15 minimum wage, $31,200 annual for anyone who works 40 hours in America two and a half pennies additional to that quarterly dis distributed towards the American workers dividend for all rank and file employees. Now what that converts into doing the easy math is as I said, if one person starts with 31,002 a year before taxes and 25, no, two and a half cents on a dollar is shared with the employees on the GMP of all of Americans' cash register receipts. You got to share that two and a half cents with the workers. That means if you work alone at 7-Eleven at or a corner store running the show for a whole shift, for every thousand dollars that comes in, you get a 25 dollar bonus. Simple math. And before I go on, just so the businessmen don't go, ah, that's going to kill my butt. The government also will give a two and a half percent tax break for whatever their rate is for delivering it to the people, creating a perpetual stimulus. Where it works now with corporations also, 
and I'm talking about the economics of it on the ground level because like Carvel said, for the people who are commoners, they have to take all the polls they want. We're not stupid, it is the economy. <laughs> so we'll just set that aside now that you understand where this comes from. Corporate rate must start at no lower than 20%. They'll get the 3% off. They have to pay 17%. And no gadgets, just let's make it simple. They pay 17% and we propose a flat rate for anyone under their so-called $400,000 ceiling. They think people don't need to be taxed. Well, I agree at that point. Yeah, maybe you can up it a little bit. But the Oh, I dropped it. When you it. did the, the <laughs> that, you got it right here. Okay. That's all right. Maybe if you put it over there and okay, it, more to grab on. <laughs> all right, yeah, I'm going to try to do it so that I can get it on. Is my okay. diction sound clear? I wanted to fix my teeth before I got here, but. <laughs> no, you're all right. I, I've been told my tongue has to roll off them for my, I don't want to sound like Trump. <laughs> I got you, I got you. <laughs> Slur words and stuff. Okay, whenever you're ready to start. Hmm. Now, this, this corporate rate that starts at 20% and goes to 17%, we give them a 3% break because Next thing in line is both the worker and the employer must start paying in 50% more. I think the rate's always been 1.75 for FICA and all of that, unemployment, retirement, et cetera, et cetera, SSI. But it needs to be upped to two and a quarter or thereabouts, whatever one, one and a half times is, that will solidify Social Security, will give them the money for unemployment to pay the benefits they all need for leaves for the certain reasons that we've all been, been talk, told about. They've talked about it so much. Anyhow, now every employee municipal, county, state, federal, can get a 20% raise with the taxes coming in from this system. No longer will someone making corporate money while a school teacher is paying 17% or a policeman or whatever paying 17% will be able to pay less, finance ourselves. The only other thing we do to, in the business uh, corporate arena is all this stuff about reinvestments not being taxable. If they're gonna keep making themselves so rich that they can gain a trillion dollars in the GNP every year or two, they can share. 20% of that to make us better. So, reinvestment, the uh, entertainment that they do in massive amounts of dollars <laughs> must now be taxed at 20%. For every $4 they spend partying or bettering themselves, they're gonna give 20 on 100 to the people's needy and social programs. So let's get that straight to begin with because people say, how are you going to do that? They're not going to want, well, whether they want to or not, don't cost them anything this way, except that they can't just spend a hundred dollars or a million dollars on themselves and not give the people anything. And we do without their tax money so they can get better done. Okay, also to boost this 
perpetual stimulus. I call it the reawakening of the long, too, way too long sleeping giant. Cannabis legalization nationwide. Don't ask them to count the billions that's paid nationwide to police, put people through courts, and throw them in jail and ruin their lives forever if they can get away with it. When the people on the street are selling it in most of our nation, they can't stop it. They can't tax it. The dividend in the end, which is no dividend at all, is spending billions of dollars to stop something that they haven't been able to stop for 50 years instead of legalizing it nationwide, taxing it nationwide, eliminating all of these percentage of people in the jails, which I understand at least one out of five is a marijuana thing in the drug realm, in the courts. So think of all that money saved. Like I say, perpetual stimulus and all of this money being spent at all of these levels can be making our schools better, our streets better. And the most important part, just like the people get a raise to 30,000 plus who are at the bottom, so do the workers at all levels. Again, municipal, county, state, federal, everybody gets a 20% raise. So let's get that part out of the way. When you put all of those additional funds piggy banked on what we're spending now, you're talking about three, four, as the stimulation progresses, we can add another five mil trillion to our GNP within four years if not less. Now, the kicker, the thing that makes it all totally plausible is Warren and Bernie Sanders have been talking about a millionaire's tax and a billionaire's tax for uh, half of forever. <laughs> when you get to for how long. So uh, let me see if I could pull this this page up here. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this is the way it works. For each million dollars, if, it, if it's taxed at 3%, that's $30,000. I mean, come on, you got a million dollars, you can't give up 30 grand. For billionaires, it's a half million per billion. Now, when you add in the 1,200 or whatever millionaires that buy, and many of them are multi-million. So if, if average, each one of them says that's a millionaire had even five million dollars, that would be 4,500 times 30 from them, 30K from them annual. If you're a millionaire, we're off the charts already because a half a million a clip per billion and all of this money must be earmarked for, for health, welfare, and education, which means no one would have to pay more than six and a half percent for their medical of their, of their take home spendable salary. If you have dependents, maybe make it seven and a half. But that's one third of the cost to half of the cost, depending who you are, of your medical now. We also propose catching up to the Europeans, the Asians, and our educational system. And this is the education must start at day one. All of this bull about uh, eliminating uh, Head Start and this, uh, no, 
Head Start should be kindergarten. Eliminate kindergarten. You don't need both. If you haven't taught them in three years the basics before first grade, you have failed, not the implementation of the system. It's what you didn't teach them while you had them there. We also need to teach these kids from day one when they start squirmishing with each other, skirmishing, excuse me, we are all Americans. It's been beyond me since my high school days, which was 50 plus years ago, that this country waits till you're an adult and only if you join the military to implore you that we are all Americans. Not to do it once you hit the military, but only if you join up. Why? Look at the dividend that hasn't come from it. I pause because I want you to think for a minute. How many kids will be fighting with each other through all of their school years if we indoctrinate them into one America from day one? Answer, a lot less. Okay, so that will finish that part off for the beginnings. But along the way, we not only eliminate kindergarten, but you want to save the spacing problem, and as I said, catch up to the Asians and the or, uh, Europeans. What we must do is one through five will be grade school. Six and seven will be middle school. Eight, nine, ten will be high school. So you graduate at 16, going on 17, just like they do in those parts of the world. Now that will solve a space problem. They say, well, we need more schools. Of, well, if you cut it back by 16% or thereabouts, you have the more space. Now you have teachers making 20% more than they used to make. Now you've got a system that feeds itself, brings impactful efficacy, and of course you have to escalate because most kids here in America, as far as I know now, I'd be surprised if half of them leave high school knowing two language is enough to go to the another country and actually con conversate with the people there. In Europe, they know at least three. Many of them know four, five, six. I mean to at least have a pig Latin, as we call it in America, conversation with someone else. Uh, their kids can learn advanced algebra, trigonometry, physics, when they're in what we call middle school, we best catch up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ah, and the biggest part of the economic savings. And this is the blockbuster. I'll go back again and state all the levels. Municipal, county, state, or federal. As I've gone with Speak Up America in many different places, we're all sick of paying for the mistakes of the people we pay to give a job to, taxpayer paid. So I state it this way, all taxpayer paid employees must take out their own indemnity insurance. They may work for us, but when they do what they have vowed not to do, as in protect and serve, and live up to the codes 
of their job description. I believe it was Mr. Reagan back in the 80s made it so, oh, we must protect these people. Well, guess what? The protection for them is us paying taxpayer dollars to pay millions, in some cases, cities probably pay out as, I mean, a big city like New York or LA, Chicago, who knows how many millions they pay out annually on lawsuits. Let them get their own insurance. If they screw up enough that they can't acquire insurance, well, guess what? Their job's parked just like their car is. Case closed. We must not be spending all this money to pay off wrongdoing that we didn't even do. Now, the other thing before I get to the amendments themselves is there's a t an attachment I made to the first one I wrote, which came out, I believe, June, probably right at June 6th in 2016. And that's the personal definition of character, which, which are questions such as, do you believe in equitable equality? Do you believe in the golden rule? Do you believe in doing things to other people you would not accept being done to you? Et cetera, et cetera. So once they give us a balance of what shoes they say they wear, or a statement of, we hold them to that. Uh, before I get to the amendments, I might as well add this, and there's so much to add in today. <laughs> You're fine. But if you keep following it, take notes, put it together. I'll tell you where to find it all in writing and in video. But the main thing is, as of Monday, and I've already talked to some folks, we are going to go into the call them out phase. The honesty and equity amendment is all about truth. Trey Gowdy, I believe it was Mr. Strzok from the FBI in Senate hearings some years back stated, in fact, he boomed out, you have not taken your polygraph for over two years. Why should we in the Senate believe a word you say? Sir. <laughs> so, ding, ding, ding went off in my mind as I hope it goes off in yours. You mean the Senate has been polygraphing people who are government agents to verify their validity of truth? So, guess what, Mr. Orwell, or your Orwellians who are out there, what's good for the goose must definitely, in this case, be good for the gander. We have an amendment that will dictate, decree, and initiate polygraphs every six months if you're an agent or someone who is detrimental to society's existence internationally and domestically. And it works this way. We've set up where there have to be a triad of Republicans, Democrats, and at least one independent. For sensitive information, they've got their, uh, whatever they call it, gang of eight or whatever it is, uh, the top four on each side. And there must always be an independent. And if one can't be found, a federal judge who's an independent to hear what's sensitive. The rest, it's open field. We all know what's been going on out there, 
we've all had more disinformation than we could imagine. We spend so much time sorting out what is true, by the time we find it, we don't have time to fix it because they're sending another one at us. So here it goes. I'm going to look in the camera and let you all know. As of Monday, I have, and I'll let me show you. These 11 members of Congress at the Capitol building that I have visited a couple of times, they include Jamie Raskin, uh, Jim Claiborne, where I vote in Michigan, in Saginaw, Miss Slotkin, and many others. And yes, I even have three or four Republicans. I'm an independent. This is nothing about Democrat, Repub, blah, blah, blah. Call them out. Tell them. I will take a polygraph, publicly videotaped, and distributed. I will fill out the definition of character. You do the same. We each get to ask each other six questions that are yes or no. Let's solve this problem right now, this voting cycle. Make sure you push this because we're going to spend half of our time between now and November, if not three quarters, trying to figure out who's honest, who's right, who's telling the truth about what they are, never mind what they're going to do for us. Call Them Out Week is coming next week. I am sending emails to all of these people, and I have the chief of staff of every one of them's phone number and email address. It's going out in the mail this weekend. We must remain mindful. The proliferators of fake and false information have deployed their formidable minions of useful idiots. As voters, we must not become unuseful idiots to ourselves and our descendants. We the people need not wait for the delivery of what these people's ballot resolutions offer and provide. Ballot resolutions that become ratified decree and dictate the implementations we the people demand and insist are most relevant for the breeding of America better for all citizens. What I call ABVAT, which is our counter to MAGA and 2025. Uh, as I said, I'm an independent. Uh, as I understand, uh, all of this 2025 is not necessarily a Republican thing, any more than my amendments are necessarily a Democratic thing. Both of us consider them a, an American thing. And that's why it's so important I remain an independent, because I'm a firm believer we must, like when it comes to health care, I'm from Massachusetts. Romney saved my life. I would not be here without mass health when it came. Obamacare is its sister mirror image. The differences are minute. We must cherry pick the most lucrative and effectually efficient points of each and meld them into something that covers everybody for everything they need to have covered. And as I stated before, do the math. You ask where the money is, 
do the math. What I've said so far provides all of the money for affordable health care, affordable uh, a living wage that's upward bound, and a guaranteed retirement for everybody once they get there. The only other thing I'll say before I move on on that is even the young ones have probably seen reruns of Laverne and Shirley. You know, two girls got out of high school, got minimum wage jobs, pulled their money, and could afford to live. This is what I want for my grandchildren and great-grandchildren coming behind them. And all told it, I've got about 15, 16 of them. Well, make it a dozen, because two or three have already graduated. But the point is, is do the math. 31 two a year, twice. How many people out there, especially young ones just starting out, would love to graduate next year in June and start before taxes with $62,000 $400 if they work full time to live off of. Ask them what they're living off of now and you'll have your instant answer. And, uh, to move on, I have, let me give you my introduction to cures instead of band-aids which is what I call this whole program. Because I'm insecure. These band-aids get torn off and they don't work for long. Okay. As I'll state again, I, Downtown Daniel Evans, author of the Taylor Floyd Honesty and Equitable Equality Amendment in tandem with the R. Barry Brooks New Deal 2020, addresses the previously unaddressed, lest the unaddressed be the catalyst of our undoing. And we're headed there right now in the handbasket. That's not even a discussion because of the unaddressed. In tandem with our ministry partners, brothers and sisters of humanity, people for honesty in America, uh, an American better for all citizens, ABFAC, associates, these people's ballot resolutions outline the blueprint that provides socio, ethnic, economic provisions. The destitute become working poor, working poor to middle class, middle class can now see upper class, while the affluent remain affluent skin in the game, a piece of the pie, and common ground where no one gets raked over the coals. Now, I'm not the first to say these things are necessary. Uh, M MSNBC Morning Joe and his associates have been saying they've been talking about this and recognize this in Congress and the Senate since the cows came home though some of them are still out there, obviously. But uh, no one can figure out a blueprint and a roadmap on how to get it done. Enter the Honesty and Equitable Equality Amendment and the New Deal 2020. Now, before you find out what's in it, you must also realize I created a jury of 12 many moons ago. Six of our founding fathers and six enlightened theologists, deities, deities. Let me start with our founding fathers, Adams. 
Jefferson, Franklin, Madison, Washington, and least known, John Jay, who with Jefferson and Adams crafted what's known as the Federalist Papers, which were all of the things Madison had to consider answering to when he helped craft and oversaw the crafting of the Constitution itself. The enlightened deities, let's start with Moses, Jesus, Gandhi, the Dalai Lama, Buddha, the Hindus, all share versions of the universally shared golden rule. As Christian Americans recite, forgive us as we forgive others, better start practicing it. I have I have not loved you as I should, speaking to God. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. You better start practicing it. The golden <laughs> rule is the crossroad that intercepts all enlightened ideologies. Just like our DNA, the golden rule makes us 90% the same, just as our DNA does. What the courts and politicians of yesteryear and today decree, the politicians and courts of tomorrow can take away, as we've just found with Roe versus Wade. What we the people vote for and ratify, only we the people can take away. Let me remind you of the song that sparked this all. It's called A Song for Peace and Justice. We can save God's world today. <clears throat> Composed in Winter Park, Florida, at the request of the, the chief of the Seminole Indians in 1999 at Rollins College. In, in Winter Park, Florida. And just before I give you the words, in fact, I'll try to sing them without my guitar as best I can. Once they heard it, a half dozen people came up to me and said, you know, Daniel, those are beautiful thoughts, but now how do we make it happen? Enter. The Taylor Floyd Honesty and Equitable Equality Amendment and the R. Barry Brooks New Deal 2020. Lord, too many are dying, too many are crying. Lord, if we keep trying, we can save God's world today. Homeless kids we ain't feeding, all the folks that are needing. Can you tell us a just reason for God's earth to fade away? So many tears cry at our border, cage kids they call law and order. With our vote we must be bolder, we can save God's world today. Mothers help all the needing, yes, fathers stop all the bleeding. Can you tell us the just reason for God's earth to fade away? Listen to us where God's children, we will listen if you'll listen. We must all have the same mission. We can save God's world today. From the turmoil of 
tomorrow, filled with pain and filled with sorrow, to give our children new tomorrows in a world of harmony. So listen to us, we're God's children. We will listen if you listen. Let us all have the same mission. We can save God's world today. Create a world of peace and justice. We embrace and share amongst us. Balance ecology around us in a world of harmony. Remember tears cry at our border. Yes, they call it law and order. With our vote we must be bolder. Yes, we can save God's world today. In ending, what gave me the beginning being from Massachusetts, watching the John Adams series, when he stated what does not begin honestly rarely ends in honesty. I believe that is ir irrefutable, but someone will find a way to try to tear it down anyway. And also know this about John Adams. Ben Franklin, Franklin, correctly for the Times, informed Adams and Jefferson that though <coughs> the uh, <coughs> though he agreed the states that depended economically on the issue of slavery would not sign, still. Adams and Jefferson brought it up, insisted it came up at the Constitutional Convention with Madison, and of course, wisely for the time, not wanting to destroy the Union before it got off its foot, as Franklin said, declined to really pursue the slavery issue, but it was mentioned, it is in the papers there, uh, the transcripts of what went on. Madison did bring it up as he said, we must address the plight of the black man. But we all know bringing it up now brings flat. Obviously, the South would not have stayed with the 13 colonies if you forced them to get rid of slavery. But just know, to all of my brothers and sisters of humanity out there that are not lily white, that though these people were slave owners, they had, what's the word for it? Admitted within their own hearts, minds, and souls that it was the initial sin. And they even mention someday they may pay when they met their ma maker. <coughs> <coughs> and for one last thing, Sam Adams was our first patriot, Bunker Hill. He was the one who said, we must not listen and live by the dictates of the king. People must be free to live as they choose, not as they're told. Unfortunately, right now, for the last 16 years, I have heard from many of the people who support 2025 and MAGA, we want the government in our lives less. Exact words. I've heard over and over, not so much recently, now that they want everybody to live the way they want us to, the way they want themselves to live, and don't care as long as they get what they want for themselves. 
to me, isn't that on the way to being autocrat, dictator, king, queen, etc.? And to leave it, let me give you one good last thought. What Sam Adams mentioned boils down to one statement additional to the Declaration of Independence. And we'll put it uh, as just an addition somewhere in New Deal 2020. And how should I state this directly? Preservation of personal, individual rights must not be infringed, diminished, or downtrodden. The same thing applies to voting. And the same thing applies to politics and the courts. To make it simply put, if you don't call out honesty, you won't get honesty, as John Adams said. If you want to live free, you'd better, while we have all these soldiers on the street from all these different individual interest groups. We all meet at the same crossroad. We must move forward with honesty. We must create a new constitution um, amendment that specifies oversight of moral, ethnic, codes that apply to the White House, apply to the House and Senate, apply to the Supreme Court, all the courts below them, Justice Department, FBI, NSA, I don't care who you are, you must take that self-definition of character. If you say you're not treasonous and you're not, uh, what's the new category I've created with this Constitution? This is a new one. Because treason is only federal. federal. I am asking them to write up a statute that states there is such a thing from here forward as contempt against the people. Especially if we are taxpayer paid, you cross us, you shyst us, you lie to us, and you deceive us that will be contempt of the people. And once you're, you're convicted of it, just like a drug conviction, you can't work for us again. We're not gonna pay you to come back and do it again. They talk about three strikes you're out. I may be incorrect. I may stand to be corrected, I'll always admit. But this is a necessity. Amen, amen, amen. I love all of America. Just like the Bible says, even the ones who perceive, perceive themselves as my enemy. I have no enemies, just people I wish to speak to that I hope choose to listen. Stay blessed. Be back soon.